It's time for Python on Hardware News. Okay, so uh, as always, please go to Adafruit Daily, check out the newsletter. There's a lot going on. Um, I So this was one of my favorite projects of the week. This is, you wear this to the club and just says God. I just like that light blue look. That yeah. is, like, it's very Tron cyber. It's it, like it. It's yeah. like PLYR. And then um, I saw our friend Eva from the EFF. She's like, I'm going to make one that's going to say armed and it starts beeping. <laughs> um, <laughs> Counting down. Yeah. So anyways, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the newsletter. But this week, I wanted to make sure we focus on a couple of things. Um, actually, one more thing. I thought that this was a really neat project. And I thought the Hackaday folks came up with a great title. Macro popsicle melts in your desk, not in your mouth. And this is a little circuit Python two key um, keyboard. Oh, it's like a two percent so, milk, but it's frozen. It's so cute. Um, so there's a lot going on, and I'll say this: like the amount of stuff that we're seeing that people are doing with circuit Python right now, it's getting really hard to keep up with. Anne's doing an amazing job on the newsletter, so sign up. But we do have to talk about 2022 and what we want to see yeah. in circuit Python. So. Um, I thought I'd start this week. So this is what I would like in CircuitPython 2022. Okay. I would like to be able to plug in an HDMI cable into a CircuitPython board, and that'll be the output from the board, and then plug it into kind of like what I'm doing now. Like right now there's a camera plugged in. We have an overhead over here. What I would like to be able to do is switch over to that video feed and have it do all sorts of video effects. And by video effects, I mean like neat patterns and be able to do like video mixing with it. Um, maybe I would pump the audio through it and maybe there would be a line going across the screen and when the audio would be picked up from the video board, it would start to make, you know, like a little thing, like a visualizer. Yeah. But I want it to, to, to be live in real time and I want to be able to overlay that on things like this. So I'm currently buying a few of these like video synths and there's software ones that are hard to use and expensive and you need like a M1 Pro processor. And then there's some that are like, they're kind of okay, they're kits and they're DIY ones. Um, some of them use a Raspberry Pi, some of them do some other things. But I really want one that's CircuitPython based. So CircuitPython with HDMI out support with scriptable things that you can do. Almost like, um, you know, like processing, you can kind of do some neat stuff with graphics. Something like you turn a knob and it makes the display go weird and then you would overlay that onto OBS or something like that just to do like live art stuff. I thought that would be kind of neat, like a video toy. So that's my CircuitPython that's 2022. That's so 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's my request. Okay. Um, the other thing that um, we wanted to talk about this week, because this is a special edition of the uh, Python on hardware, is we got a lot of floppy stuff going on. So uh, we're going to do two for two here. One is the work that we got done on Friday. And then this is like hot off the press. Jepler got CircuitPython working with five and a quarter floppy disks. So I'm going to play this back to back. And that'll be our Python on hardware news for the week. If you like retro hardware, if you like uh, being able to uh, archive stuff and upload it online so people can share computer science history, um, you're going to like all this stuff. Take it away. Present and future and past us. Hello, Data, what is this? This is a Feather M4, and it's on a tripler board with a floppy feather wing connected to this floppy drive. It's got a diskette that I've got some files in it. And um, this feather is actually running CircuitPython. It's a build that Jepler just gave me because he just implemented Adafruit Floppy, which is hardware native support for eating MFM floppies. So let's... Uh, we run the code and it'll actually list all the files. I put some old frac text files and I have a little bit of a ASCII code here that will let me page through uh, the text files. So it's reading the fat, it's reading the files. I can read my old text files if I like on a diskette. Um, and this is coming soon to CircuitPython. So we have native floppy disk file system support. Nice work. Thanks, Jeffler. Hi, Jeff here with a very stylish vintage Microsoft MS-DOS 5 upgrade floppy and a program in CircuitPython that likes to pretend it is a vintage operating system. So let's see what we can do with the version of CircuitPython I've been cooking up.
We can list a directory, and I suppose we should probably read the instructions. Anyway, that's about it. Can't wait to see how you'll use CircuitPython uh, to work on any archival floppies that you might have that are still of interest. Thanks, and have a good one. And that's Python on Hardware news this week. And again, don't forget, you can get this delivered in your mailbox. There's Blinka, the friendly snake, that'll deliver it for you. And you do that at adafruitdaily.com, where we do not spam, we do not trick you. It has nothing to do with your store account. We did that on purpose. <laughs>